Johnny Murphy, we've just watched Ireland end Wales' consecutive run. They had won eight games in the tournament in a row before coming to Dublin. They were seen as the favourites by a few points coming into this as well. Uh, but Ireland have turned them over with a very impressive performance. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, to get a bone, uh, to get you know four tries the way they did. Um, you know, it took a while, but I think the pivotal moment was or appeared was uh, the defence with about you know between with about 15, 16 minutes to go, uh, and and kind of nine minutes left. There was a sustained period of pressure there, um, and Ireland held them out. And you could see that on that scrum penalty that Ireland got underneath their posts. That just sucked the complete life out of Wales. Um, you know, you could see that the whole flow and momentum of the game had shifted back into Ireland. Where if Wales probably felt if they had scored there, you know, there were a point, they were a score in it with you know eight nine minutes to go, they have a chance. Where they knew then that that the game was gone. Ireland to be fair went up the far end and really turned the screw. They they mauled off that uh, off that penalty they went to width off that and they got about you know a 40 meter return out of it so that just you know that that phase there just completely all the momentum was there and just sucked the life out of Wales. You kind of saw that in the celebration as well. Peter Romani was celebrating almost like it was a try. CJ Stander came up and James Ryan very quickly after as well. I'd imagine, look, you played as a back, but for a forward pack, that must have been such a relieving moment to turn that over and get a penalty to kick the ball up the field. Yeah, I think so, because they felt that, um, you know, the penalty that led to that was he penalised CJ for uh, not being able to control his body weight over, over the ball, which was very harsh because CJ was in, he was second man in, he was over the ball and he actually put pulled the ball with him out of the contact zone and I think that you know it was a harsh penalty so probably just just what they deserved in, in that context and in general I think um, uh, you know that was that was the winning of the game but that just gives the whole team their energy levels just changed um, and I think that was um, it, it was brilliant it was it was a really really good good display. Let's talk about the tries. Uh, go back to Jordan Lammer first of all. Um, I thought really patient from the Irish pack to work the ball over here to this right-hand touchline. And then when the ball got back to Conor Murray, even when he laid that ball off to Jordan Lammer, he had a lot to do. He had four defenders coming in on him. Um, first of all, I guess the twinkle toes to make the half yard of space. Uh, but then I thought good upper body strength from him as well, just to wriggle through to the try line. Yeah, really good power. I think you saw all his attributes there in, in that kind of you know second or two play there, where you know he went on an overs line, got Tompkins, uh, got him to push too far to the touch line. A really aggressive step off his right hand side creates that gap, and then just his. Strength Strength, a really good fend, and then drive through the contact. You see his dynamism there. In that, that is probably what you know Jordan Larmer is. In that, literally just that snapshot of play. Really good feet, and then powerful through the contact. So really, really good play. It was a top, top quality finish. His overall performance, because last week some of the criticism was maybe that he looked to run absolutely everything, and maybe a bit of variety is needed in the 15 shirt from Jordan Lambert, where he's still learning the position. Uh, today, did we see a little bit more about his game today? Yeah, he had a couple of nice kicks, although he did kick one out on the full, but you, you, you know that's just probably a decision that he needs to work on, whether he goes low and hard along the ground, or tries to bounce it out, you know, one bounce and out. And I think he kind of got caught kind of in between. He didn't do either then, and then it ended up not being a proper kick and going straight out so um, yeah you know those learnings will, will, will definitely move uh, he'll take them and move on um, but I think in general it was a, it was a really good performance I think um, you know for me the, uh, the back three functioned very well and you know um, Andrew Conn made a couple of really good kicks uh, Jacob Stockdale had a couple of nice uh, kicks along the line on exit so their run kicks ex exits they're not overly reliant on the box kick which was a criticism before really really worked today Andrew Conway has an excellent outside of his right boot. He played one like a laser right down the line at a time when I think everybody in the stand was screaming run as opposed to kick. But he had the confidence in himself to make a very important kick with very little margin for error, really. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think Andrew, uh, you know, Conway himself will probably, you know, he, he knows that th those work-ons are there for him and he's really put a huge amount of work in. For me... He was excellent and he was right up there for man of the match because he did a lot of nitty gritty that probably don't people don't give him credit for. Every uh, kick he chased, he either won in the air or made a real positive tackle where they looked like they were going to get away. Uh, you know, it was a real complete com uh, performance, and then just to finish the try off that three v two was really, really good. Um, you know, there was still a bit of finishing in that left. There were, you know, the cover was coming across, gets his fend out, and then finishes re uh, finishes in the nicely in the corner. Nothing, nothing more than he deserved.
And he'll be happy, Johnny, as well, that he had that little bit left in the legs to make that sprint for the line. And not easy to do when you've played 75 minutes of a difficult game. Yeah, well, you know, he's a very powerful uh, player himself. Uh, quick off the mark. And, you know, that stood to him there in that instance. Uh, Tyke Furlong scored Ireland's second try. Before we talk about that, the Welsh one. A lot of people in the stands were unhappy because it looked like Alan Wynne Jones, when he offloaded that ball towards Dan Bigger, may have pushed it slightly forward. Was that a case of just maybe the attacking team getting the benefit of the doubt? Yeah, I think so. You know, it was positive play, and you know, anything that's on the line, they'll probably give to to the team that are being positive and trying to push forward. I think you know, defensively for Ireland, that was one area in the sec in the second half that they tidied up was their hunt on the inside. They got exposed back inside the ball towards the uh, towards a breakdown a couple of times through it offload or actually Dan Bigger playing back into that space and they're hunting not pushing forward getting caught coming across so but that was an area that they fixed in the second half um, and they were very secure there um, uh, throughout the second half Ty Furlong again a player I thought he had a really good game quite aside from his try but in terms of his try we saw that just raw power that he has um, Larmer has to take a step to make space Furlong has no problem just going through two defenders. Yeah, and I think that that's probably something that has stayed with them. You know, they still have their killer game in the 22, which is, you know, just powerful. Get up, get off the ground, beat them around the corner. And that was the case in point there. You know, just raw power from someone like Tyke Furlong with, you know, someone on his back driving through the contact. Really, really good finish. We saw Peter Romani and Alan Wynne Jones kind of square up as they were coming off the field. And uh, Johnny Sexton was getting up in the faces of some of the Welsh players as well. I guess that's the type of regression that supporters probably want to see from the Irish team it showed they weren't going to be bullied Rob Herring had talked about that yesterday as well maybe they felt a bit bullied in Cardiff last year that wasn't going to happen today yeah, well, you know, those, you know, a performance like last year does stick in the memory. And, you know, I think they have a couple of things like that that they probably feel themselves that they want to rectify. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think it's just a presence around that and, and knowing that, um, you know, if there is something like that, that there's an Irish presence, it's not it's not being over the top. It's not losing your heads, but it's just knowing that they're up for it. And, and that presence can sometimes can have an effect you know there's a steely-eyed look about uh, about people and uh, and and you know a constant um you know and it all comes to fruition in that scrum turnover at the end you know it's that release of emotion it's that release of knowledge that you've done that together and i, and I think that's you know that's that's what you you get you know when you put it in we often hear sporting teams and sporting management say we're improving week on week and the more time we have together, the better we're going to get. But for me as an observer, this was a big step up on the Scotland game last week. Yeah, I would think so too. You know, there were some subtleties last week, but you know, I think another week under my cat uh, in terms of attack, you see they're very clinical in their three v twos. They 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 like to move the ball a bit more to width. They're very. Uh, uh, they do that very simply with a, a really nice hard runner, be it a forward or, or one of the centres coming short and then someone out the back. And then they've the, the nice handling skills to, to, to utilise the space that they're creating. But the p pivotal to all that is, you know, the front line runners being aggressive and look like they're ca they're they're getting the ball, which sticks defenders, and then they they have those whole they create that space out wide. So very simple, but very very effective. And you know that three v two for Andrew Conway's try. It's not easy to effect, to execute that in that area of the park when the the. Um, you know, when the defensive line are coming so hard at you. So, and really good accuracy. And also, some teams die with the ball there. So, Larmer, you know, can feel the heat of that line speed and will, will, will carry, where he has the presence of mind and also, um, you know, the confidence to throw that kind of half pass over his right shoulder and just get the ball out there. Knows that if he can get it to a Spinks, Andrew Conway has enough depth on the edge that he'll catch a, a, and score himself. So, really, really good. Conor Murray, what's been your take of the performance? Because so much talk, and I think the talk has been mainly because of John Cooney as opposed to Conor Murray. He was defended, uh, Conor Murray, that is, by Johnny Sexton this week, who said, look, it's international rugby. You don't get a whole lot of space. Sometimes you've got a box kick. What did you make of Murray's performance today? I thought it was very good. Um, what he did, he did well. He box kicked. He had a couple of really good. Uh, uh, he had two good touch finders from the base of a rook. Um, and then when the game was in the melting pot, we went back to you know putting uh, box kicks up in their half 
but contestable box kicks. Andrew Conway gets up both times, gets the ball back to Ireland, ends up getting the ball back himself two or three uh, passes later. You know, I think the flack for, for Murray has been a bit, been a bit harsh and, uh, and I think they have a really nice variance uh, to what they're trying to do on their run kicks and that kind of stuff now. Um, and it was certainly a case that, you know, he built the foundations himself and, and Sexton built the foundations for that um, you know, for the victory today and the likes of, you know, Byrne and Cooney come on and, and they just close out, they just finish it. They get those, that couple of, you know, th those scores at the end that, that, that make it look like an easy day. But they were made by the foundations of the starters. Johnny Sexton has played 140 minutes-ish over the last two weeks on the back of eight weeks of not touching a ball. Andy Farrell said last week that I think it was the Thursday of the week before Johnny Sexton went near a ball before the Scotland game. It's quite remarkable how he can come back from injury and just play at a certain level, isn't it? I think that's just testament to the um, uh, to the character he is, but also the work he puts in off the pitch. You know, to be physic, whatever about mentally, there's never ever going to be a doubt about uh, Johnny Sexton mentally and his capability of rocking into a, a melting pot and performing. But just the level of work that he had to do for his lungs to last that is ridiculous in itself. That is ridiculous. I think that's the, the physical, you know, and he's, he, he's, a, you know, he, he's only 18 months, two years younger than me. Like, so that takes a lot, you know, it takes a lot, you know, and he, he came back in like he'd never left the game. And I think that's a, a credit to, the, to his work ethic off the pitch more so. You can, you're never going to be able to question whether oh, mentally is he going to be able for it or is he going to make the right decisions. Yes, that's a given. He's world, world class and has shown that over you know, a 10, 13 year period. It's the fact that he can do it purely from a lung perspective and fitness that's insane like it's it, that it, and, and that's amazing so that that just shows how what a quality operator he is he spoke about Tom Brady multiple times he says he looks at Brady he sees him at 42 years of age still playing at a really high level I get the feeling that Johnny Sexton thinks that he can push his career to the next World Cup I know a lot of people said maybe he's a transitional captain and maybe someone like James Ryan could be the captain in 2023 I can't help but think that Johnny Sexton is backing himself at least to still be playing in France I think that's half the battle you back yourself um, uh, to do something, and someone with the, um, you know, the mental fortitude of Johnny is not going to shy away from anything like that. So, um, if uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't back against him. You know, people might say it's unlikely, but put your money on the table and see how you feel about that. And uh, that would be my, my my thing. And you know, someone like me that enjoys a enjoys a punt would be happy to lay anyone there on on that bet. But you know, to be honest, I think um yeah, certainly within his capability he doesn't show any signs. Someone that has had already we've spoken about it, has had that that amount of layoff and come back in and been up to the speed of the game that he was over the last two weeks. You know, wh why not? Why not? Someone else who took a lot of flack and CJ Standers quotes about you know, his wife and maybe some of the abuse she took online uh, from some supporters during the World Cup last year surfaced in the papers this week. He took a lot of flack ahead of this. Stuart Barnes said a couple of weeks ago that he would drop CJ Sanders and not have him in the Irish team and there were plenty of more dynamic options that were available. CJ Sanders just got man of the match in the first two games of the Six Nations. Yeah, you know, and I think that's... That also shows the mental capability of someone like CJ to have to deal with all that, you know. Um, and that's probably that's the unfortunate side of social media. Social media is fantastic, but when it's used incorrectly, like it has been in that case, it's you know it's it's disrespectful and kind of some of those comments are just you know they're not needed and and they shouldn't happen. But you know CJ stood up over the last um, two weeks, um, and you know I think today. He was an absolute nuisance at the breakdown. Um, and, OK, yeah, he got a yellow card, but that just shows how close he was to the line. But he got two or three turnovers there that he had no right to get. And just so strong in that position. He carried well. Um, and, you know, he's starting to look, at, look for soft shoulders now and move. And that just comes with the stylistic difference that is there. And, um, you know, I think when, you know, someone like Keelan Doris comes back... Um, into the mix and you know CJ is probably you know you see the back row that that starts that was due to start last week again 
you'll see him be even more impressive. You know, for me, I think he is a natural, uh, a natural six. I think that's his best position, and you will see him, you know, put in even bigger performances then throughout that. But yeah, he's massively stood up over the last two weeks. Not that he wasn't standing up before. You know, he, I don't think he's been getting. He was one of the people that was first up around the corner under Joe Smith all the time. Never, never. Uh, shied away from carrying you know his stats might not have been fast in terms of meters made but the amount of carries he was getting through he never stopped ever and I think that's uh, you know people that um, you know make those comments about about him and, and stuff they don't probably know uh, know enough to actually know what he's doing and what he's putting himself through to get to get into that position to be such a carrier all the time and consistently there